Now we all know that Poco is a dead mariachi that uh, plays the guitar. But the real question is, why did his friends leave his band? Maybe it's because he sucks so bad that his music literally hurts people. What? The, the sound of his guitar literally hurts people. It's funny, come on! Man, I swear nobody has a sense of humor these days. Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kairos Diamond, it's time to brawl. Now today, we're going to talk about the man, or skeleton, Poco. As with all of my brawler guides, we're going to look at his mechanics, an in-depth look at his stats, which game modes and maps are going to be the best to push him up to 500 and higher, and then we'll talk about high tier mechanics and tips, as well as how to counter Poco. If you want to suggest another brawler guide, make sure you drop it in the comment section below, letting me know which brawler you want to see first. And of course guys, make sure you subscribe for more awesome Brawl Stars content, including guides, let's plays, and anything else that's cringy enough to put on a YouTube video. For Poco's main attack, Power Chord, Poco strums his guitar sending out a wide spread of music that deals damage, a low amount of damage, but can affect multiple targets. His widespread allows him to get a lot of value in team fights, allowing him to charge up his super very quickly. Uh, keeping at range from other brawlers is important because it doesn't matter how close he is, if an enemy brawler gets hit, it deals the same amount of damage regardless. For his super, Encore, Poco sends out a much nicer, a much more pleasant sound than he, he does with his attack, which uplifts their souls and uh, heals them a pretty good sizable amount of, of HP. And no, it does not break walls like it did in the alpha testing of Brawl Stars. Poco Super is very good at supporting high health teammates like Bull or Frank when they start to lose HP. He can also heal himself up in a pinch. And one interesting thing about Poco Super is that it is one of two supers in the game that will fire through walls without destroying them. Do you know which other brawler has the other super? Comment below if you do. For Poco's star power, Decapo, when Poco's attack actually hits friendly brawlers, it will heal them for 400 health. If you're using Poco's attack just to heal teammates, you actually don't get very much value in comparison to how much damage you can actually deal to an enemy brawler. So most of the time, it's actually more beneficial for you to use it offensively. However, one great way to utilize this is in team fights, where he can both heal a teammate and deal damage to an enemy player. His star power is mediocre, meaning that you probably should not prioritize purchasing this star power unless you really like Poco. Now let's take a look at Poco's stats and compare them to how they rank against every other brawler in the game. Here's this wonderful radar chart that shows you exactly how he compares to other brawlers and uh, you'll notice a few different things right here. Okay, his lowest rank is going to be his attack where he has the lowest damaging attack against a single brawler in the game. But to make up for that, it has a very high reload speed, which means that Poco is very strong in long battles where he can deal a lot of damage over a period of time, surviving by recharging his super and using it when necessary. On the flip side, Poco really struggles against burst brawlers who focus on dealing a ton of damage really, really quickly. Poco has a shorter range than most of the brawlers in the game. It's actually the shortest out of all of the gem carriers in the game, which is a very important interaction for gem grab that we'll talk about a little bit later. He has the slowest moving speed in the game along with the majority of the other brawlers. Um, he has relatively high health points and you pair that with his super, he actually has a very high survivability. It takes Poco longer to charge his super than most brawlers against one target. However, if three players are bunched up, he can charge up his super with only two quick attacks. For Poco's ease of use, I would give it a five out of five, meaning it is very easy to use him, and a one out of five for skill cap, meaning that it's relatively easy to master him. Due to the width of his shot, uh, if you're only facing one opponent, there's almost no reason to manually aim your shots. That being said, manual aiming his shots does become more important in team fights when you can aim to hit multiple brawlers at once or if he's maxed out manually aim to heal a teammate while dealing damage to an enemy opponent even then his attack is very forgiving with manually aiming because of how much area there is, so if you suck at manually aiming your shots, Poco is actually a really great brawler to learn that skill with. His super covers a large radius, making it almost a guaranteed heal, and you can also auto-aim his super so that it will actually heal the closest friendly brawler without full HP. The two things that are difficult for new players to understand when you very first pick up Poco is how to uh, stay no closer than you absolutely have to to the enemy brawler, and that Poco wins the long fight, not the burst fight. Fight. Once you understand these two things, you'll have everything you need to know to master Poco. Well, those two things 
and the high tier tech and tips that I'll be giving you in later in this video. Now let's talk about the best modes and maps to play Poco in if you want to push them up to 500 trophies or beyond. Here you can see which modes Poco struggles and thrives on. I don't recommend playing him on Bounty or Heist, he just doesn't have enough burst damage to do well on either. He can be pushed early on in Showdown, especially with the survival strategy, um, or even Duo Showdown where you can actually utilize his super to heal up a teammate. But his two best modes for pushing are going to be Brawl Ball and Gem Grab. In Brawl Ball, you want to focus on controlling the field and also keeping your ball carrier alive. With his wide attack, he can control large parts of the map and deal lots of damage over a period of time, especially where Brawl Ball tends to have a lot more team fights than other game modes. In Brawl Ball, it is very important for you to at least have one other teammate on your team who can deal a lot of dam damage quickly in case the enemy team has a tankier brawler like El Primo or Frank or something like that, that uh, Poco just cannot handle alone. When facing against those tanks, it's important for Poco to try and poke at them and force them into uncomfortable situations. Poco is great on all maps, but his best maps are going to be Backyard Bowl, Pinhole Punt, or Super Stadium. In Gem Grab, Poco is a gem carrying boss. Your role is to carry all the gems, support your teammates, and most importantly, you should always prioritize staying alive over taking out the enemy team. This means that you need to fall back when you need to heal, and you should be very careful about not overextending yourself into the enemy's side of the map in case they might surprise you, take you out, and grab some easy gems and run away. If you're having a hard time taking out an enemy gem carrier, uh, you can focus on going to the, one of the side brawlers and uh, 2v1ing them with one of your teammates. Poco tends to work on all gem grab maps, with the exception of Undermine and Echo Chamber as well, uh, where longer ranged gem carriers tend to work a little bit better. Now let's go ahead and cover 8 advanced tips and tech for how to plague Poco, and then we'll go ahead and cover some tips on countering Poco. Number 1. Poco has one of the fastest unload speeds in the game at 0.3 seconds. This is the amount of time that it takes for Poco to fire off a shot before he can fire off a second shot. Because Poco has a fast unload speed and a fast reload speed, this actually means that it can be really beneficial for Poco to spam fire all three shots at an enemy brawler and then fall back until you've reloaded your shots and at which point you can then come back out and do the same thing over and over again. Uh, this is different than other brawlers that have a slower reload speed who should primarily focus on conserving their shots so that they can get a quick kill. <laughs> For Poco, three quick shots cannot take a single brawler out alone, but it may catch them off guard, force them to fall back, or even allow a teammate to finish them off for you. Peeking around a corner, throwing off those three shots really, really quickly, and then falling back behind the wall is a great way to do this. Second tip is that similar to how Nita can attack under walls, Poco actually can attack around a corner. How much it curves around the wall actually depends on Poco's position in respect to the wall. If Poco is actually too close to the wall, very little of his attack will actually curve around it. I think this is because of the, how the sound waves travel or something like that. Third tip is due to his wide shots, Poco is a great brawler to force enemies into corners or behind walls so that you and a teammate can actually come around them and pinch them. The fourth tip to playing Poco is that where most brawlers have to fall back in order to heal, Poco has the unique benefit of a burst heal that he can use as soon as he charges up his super. This means that Poco can actually stay somewhat close to the heat of battle and keep firing off his shots if the situation calls for it because this will allow him to charge up his super, burst heal himself back up to mostly full health and then stay in the match even when he has had low HP and the enemy brawler has to fall back to heal up. This leads to the fifth tip for Poco where it is very important to pay attention to how close you are to charging up your super, even more so than other brawlers. When you don't have the super up, the enemy team will underestimate you and you can use that to your advantage if you know it will only take one or two more shots before you can heal up and then quickly burst heal yourself up before the enemy player recognizes that you have been able to heal up. By doing this, you can actually bait an enemy brawler to getting too close to you so that you can take them out without them being able to take you out first. The sixth tip to Poco is that you have a special role as an active healer to pay attention to not only your own health but also the health of the other brawlers on your team. Once you have mastered that, one trick is to use his super to heal teammates when they're at about 50% um, HP rather than when they're almost dead. And the reason why is because this way you, it should actually reach them before they die rather than after. <laughs> Nothing more embarrassing is Poco than healing somebody after they've died because 
that doesn't work. For tip number seven, obviously the best way to use Poco's star power is to both heal a teammate and deal damage to an enemy player at the same time. But one of the hardest decisions with Poco's star power is knowing where, which choice to make if you have to choose between healing a teammate and taking out an enemy brawler. In Brawl Stars, defense is more important than offense in every single game mode, but typically using an attack to heal 400 HP is not as beneficial as dealing more than double that amount of HP to an enemy brawler. There are a lot of things to consider with this, and it does take some time and practice to master this, but typically I follow this rule. If you can save your teammate from dying, heal them up. If they are likely going to die regardless of whether you heal them or not, then use it to focus on the enemy player instead. Eighth tip that I have to playing Poco is regarding his relationship with the other gem carriers in Gem Grab, his best game mode. Pam outranges him and she outheals his low damage when she has her turret up. Uh, Jesse outranges him and Poco can't damage her turret as fast as she can actually heal it up. Plus, it also outranges him, making it incredibly hard for Poco to deal with it. Um, and Penny also outranges his, him and she can put her turret behind a wall, which makes it very difficult for Poco to actually deal with her. So why, guys? Why? If he gets countered by every single other brawler that is a gem carrier in the game, why does he work so well as a gem carrier in gem grab? He works super well because Poco is not a 1v1 brawler. He is a 2v2 brawler. When Poco has a tanky teammate like El Primo or Nita on his team, he can utilize his super to not only burst heal himself, but also a teammate from a long range away, allowing them to win their lane and then come and 2v1 or 2v2 the enemy team. And that is why Poco rocks so well. It does depend on the team comp, but if you're on the right map with the right team comp, he's an absolute beast to deal with. Let's talk about some quick tips to countering Poco. Poco is a relatively uh, simple brawler in comparison to other brawlers, but there are some tips that you can use to try and counter an enemy Poco. The first is to try and keep your distance from an enemy Poco. Most brawlers can outrange a Poco, and if you actually attack at max range and then fall back, Poco can hardly do anything against you unless he's willing to take some damage in order to get up close enough where he can actually hit you. The second tip is to try to burst him down. The best time to attack a Poco is before he has charged up his super or immediately after he has healed up with his super. If you're paying attention to how charged up his super is, you can easily go in during those two moments and almost ignore his attack because it does so little damage and then burst take him out before he's able to actually recharge up his super. The third tip is that tankier brawlers can typically ignore his attacks because they do so little damage. I mean, it actually takes Poco nine hits to take out an El Primo. I mean, and that takes a long time, so yeah. Before I end this video, I wanted to let you guys know that you can follow me on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, you can join my Discord server, and all the links to that are all in the description below. And also, I wanted to give a huge thank you to my YouTube members and my Patreon sponsors for helping support my channel in such a big way and helping me try to reach my dreams. Uh, for now, guys, this is Carlos. I'm ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.